Okay, so it's a view from the top of uh, bee activity. This little bee just gone in there was um, nope, she's coming out. I saved her from drowning. She uh, she found herself in a pot. So um, anyway, there we've got some reeds on the left, and uh, lots of them on the on the right here. Interesting thing is as well, I've managed to put a little hole in one of the reeds. So I think it was a natural hole, and. Um, there is a bee, if you can see it, the hole. But there is a bee that's chosen to use it, and I, I was wondering if they would go into into the side of reeds rather than the front way. Anyway, I'll keep talking. Um, wait until she comes back. Uh, so, there's all these bees coming in. And there's one working down there. And yes, we've got the I don't know if you can see it, but just in front now there's this uh, parasitic fly we get, which is a bit of a pain. And she just goes in to lay eggs on the pollen and nectar. And I really don't know how to pronounce the name properly. I think it's Coxagenus indagnata, but I'm <laughs> not sure. Um, uh, Google the um, solitary bee parasites uh, word. Uh, phrase, and you'll come to the page I was, I was writing about that this uh, a couple of years ago. So, right now, uh, the update is that I've got uh, estimated or pretty accurately got uh, about 150 tunnels sealed. Uh, it's about uh, 40 or 50 um, of these new ones I put in. I think it's another fly. And she just the thing about these parasitic flies, they just wait, oh, it's the same one. They just wait until the bee has gone and then they they nip into their tunnels and just lay their eggs on the nectar and the pollen. So uh, the bees don't really see them and and kind of uh, ignore them and don't realise they're a threat. And then you end up with lots of um, lots of bee larvae starved out by these these fly larvae because they eat a lot quicker and they uh, and usually there's several of them, so they, uh, they're busy scoffing away. Here we go. Yeah, so this is the, the half-drowned bee is still there. You can see one down here. She's finishing off her tunnel. She's great. I think that's, that may be the third tunnel I have on this set of uh, wood. This is uh, wood I re recovered from uh, near to my flat in Paris, and it's... Uh, it was just old oak uh, shelves, and so I just cleaned it up and then uh, routed it to uh, to create these these tunnels. It's interesting. This bee here, you see going in here. She's um, Osmia rufa female, so she's completely different to that one over there. And uh, that's what we call the red mason bee. Hope, hopefully, she'll come out again. Um, but most of my population are red mason bees. Uh, or, um, sorry, Osmia corn which is, which is a European bee. So, um, it looks like she's actually working in there. She's not just inspecting it. Now, the other problem we have, uh, and I spotted it today, uh, it's the day before the 1st of April, so I think it's the 29th of, um, tw sorry, 29th of April, the day before the 1st of May, is that we've, um, oh, there you go, there's that Osmia rufa female. They're much faster bees. And the problem with the um, with uh, these bees is that there's lots of other f uh, parasitic uh, flies and wasps that come along and want to steal their work. So uh, I've just noticed for the first day, uh, first time uh, today, um, here she's the one coming in there. We call it an uh, ichneumon fly, parasitic fly, monochelcid wasp. There you go. Look, that is an Osmia rufa. She's checking all the holes, looking to uh, find a place to nest. She's, they're very, very shy. Red mason be the... Um, and of course, while well, there's lots of other activity, there you go, she's checking in there. She's attracted to the fact that there's lots of other bees here, but um, there's another one down there, checking the block in the middle. So they tend to 
bizarrely they tend to emerge from their cocoons and disappear off for uh, two or three days before they come back. Um, maybe we're on holiday. Oh, this is funny. There's a, there's a bee there waiting with the mud. That's this one as well. Anyway, this, this is an update, um, lots of tunnels finished, you can see the, the length of the tunnels here, these are very very long ones, about a 30 centimetres, and I've had so far five of them finished, which is a good sign, at least if it's a good sign if they're, uh, thing if they're all uh, filled with cocoons. Oh, and by the way, we have, I'll finish off the video with this, this is, you can see over here, this is my cat, who wants to be let in and eat some food. Mm-hmm. <laughs>